Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarpet.com and me and my boy Tommy here are going to show you some awesome tips and techniques for catching catfish. Isn't that right Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ready to go fishing, Tommy? <laughs> yeah, let's go fishing. Well, I told you guys that I would do some more rod giveaways and I'm gonna do it in this video. I've got another one of my Chad Ferguson series Whisker Seeker or catfishing rods. It's a medium heavy action rod, seven footer. It's about a $70 rod and I love this thing. I have used the crap out of it for the last uh, two years and I want you to get a chance to enjoy this rod too. So I'm going to show you how you can win this rod so stay tuned, watch the video and I'm going to give you instructions on what you can do to win my rod. See, when catfish are little, they'll eat anything. They'll eat plant material, insects, snails, crawfish. I mean, it's a, it's a free-for-all. Anything they can get their mouths on, they'll swallow. But as a catfish gets bigger, the vast majority of their diet is made up of bait fish. They are apex predators. They catch and kill their food. So if you want to catch the big boys, you have to give them what they're eating. Now, you can catch them with some other stuff occasionally, but consistently, the big fish want fresh bait fish, either fresh or live. Fifty four point four degrees in February. Holy cow. Now the key to hooking bait is making sure that there's plenty of hook point exposed. If you bury your hook point in the bait, you're going to gut hook more fish and you're more likely to have the fish hit it and not get hooked up. All right, well, it's another beautiful day. It is like 70 degrees in February. The water temperature is through the roof. It's 54 and change. It's unprecedented. It's just a wonderful February day. We are pretty darn excited. I think we're gonna catch some fish. It's a really funky weather pattern, so it's really changed uh, the, the, the habits of the fish from what we're normally seeing in February. So I'm trying a spot that I never fish in the winter time. And uh, it's a little bit shallower, but, I, but the water temperature is a degree or two warmer, and uh, the bait fish are here. So those are two really good signs that this is going to be a good spot, despite the fact it's February. Hey, Tommy. Tommy. Big catfish. Rod. You, you'll reel it? Okay, you take it. I'll get the net. Okay, you got it? Keep reeling. There you go. Come on, get in there. Oh, good job, Tommy. High five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. You want to hold them? Okay. 
You got him? He's heavy. Feels like he's about 18 pounds or so. Maybe. Put him back gently, okay? There we go. Give me the other hand. Know when to hold them and know when to fold them, okay? How long do you sit in a spot before you move? In the winter time, in the daytime, the fish don't move around a lot. So the fish aren't gonna come to you. You've got to come to them. So my rule of thumb in when fishing in the daytime or in the winter is 15 minutes. If you don't get a bite within 15 minutes, recast, move spots, do something, but don't stay put. If it's in nighttime, in the summer, those fish are extremely active. They're moving around. I can sit around in the same spot for several hours if I have confidence in that spot. But if it isn't a spot that you know well, don't sit too long. About 45 minutes is about as long as I would sit in one place without a bite night fishing in the summertime. Oh yeah, he's still on. Go get him. Go get him, Tommy. You got it. You got it. You got it. You're getting him. Good job, buddy. I guess he, I'm going to see him. When you're fishing with rod holders and circle hooks, wait until that rod tip starts going down and stays moving or go down for about two or three seconds. Then reel in while it's in the rod holder till the rod bends down. Then you can take it out of the rod holder and play the fish. Come on, you're doing a great job, Tommy. Oh, I can see some color. Not a bad fish. What? It's a channel cat. It is a channel cat. Look at that. Now check this out. In the winter time, the fish tend to bury themselves in the mud a little bit and then come out to eat occasionally. Um, look at this one. See the, the mud on its belly? You can see there's mud over here on him because he's been buried down in the mud. But it's a nice warm day today and he's come out to Wait. eat. All right, so let me show you how to get a circle hook out of a fish's mouth. What you do is you go down as close to the barb as you can reach and then get the barb down to where it's snagging and then jiggle it out. Okay, it's kind of you're twisting it out then jiggling. So let me show you how to hold a catfish. Now catfish have three spines, one right here, one right here, and one right here, okay? He's tagging me. And they have this kind of like a shoulder blade right here. It's hard. And so you grab them behind this, these fins and you can lock in a really good grip on them and control the fish. Hold his tail, hold him like this by the shoulder blades, keep him from flopping around and you'll be good. If you do get stung by a catfish, don't worry about rubbing slime in it or peeing in it or all these wives' tails. Just clean it out really good with some antiseptic and you'll be fine. All right, you wanna put it, you wanna throw them back? Okay. Picking the size of bait and the size of hook is really important, okay? If your bait's too big, the fish will chomp down on the bait, but not the hook. If the bait's too small, it won't attract the bigger fish and um, it's more likely to gut hook a larger fish. So you want it just right. Now, I'm catching some uh, decent sized blue catfish and some uh, average sized channel catfish. So it's kind of a mixed bag. For the blue catfish, I'm taking one of these whole shad, just cutting it in two. I could probably just use the whole shad and that would be best, but because there's a good chance I might get a channel catfish, I'm kind of splitting the difference. Um, so, and I'm cutting the tails off because it's not very attractive. It doesn't have a lot of bait in it. And it's just another piece that the fish can chomp down on and not miss the hook. Plus, when you drag the, the, the bait in the water, the fin makes your bait spin and wraps your leader up and makes it all kinky and stuff. And we don't want kinky leader. This is a family friendly channel. So you want to play fighting scissors? Yeah. Ah, fighting scissors! Ah. Cut you! Cut you! Oh, stump! You want to reel them in? Yeah. No, Tom, it's the one on your right. They're right there. Re no, reel them in. Reel them in. Yeah, I see him. Alrighty. Got him? Yeah. He's right this way. Oh. Go back to fighting scissors. <laughs> oh, he's got mud on him. Oh, look at that. Even a small guy will take on a big piece of bait. Look, look, I just want to get some on me. You do it. 
Okay, let's see if he's on there. Just slowly reeling it. Yep, he's on there. Ah! Use the polar bear strength, Daddy. Yes, my polar bear strength. Oh, that's not a bad channel. Look at the belly on that boy. Yeah, that is a fat channel cat. You have an eating problem, sir. Channel catfish come in a lot of different colors. They're kind of yellow ones, brown ones, blue ones. Um, and sometimes it can be hard to tell a blue channel catfish from a blue fish and a brown channel catfish from a flathead. The key is this anal fin. The anal fin is round on a channel catfish, but it's rectangular on a blue oh, catfish. And the tail. The tail on a channel catfish is forked. On a flathead, it's not. So, by looking at the tail and the anal fin, you can always tell if it's a channel catfish. Forked tail, rounded anal fin, channel catfish. No matter what the color is. All right. Now it's time to go to back to fight. Okay, guys. Let me teach you a great life lesson. Don't ever let success get in the way of something better. I've had a great run here. We've got four fish on, on the deck, including a nice blue catfish. But it's been 15 minutes and I haven't gotten a bite. It's time to move. Don't let some good action nail you down into one spot. Once it cools down, move on. We're gonna go get some more fish. For it. Oh, good one, buddy. All right, use the reel some more. Use the reel some more. Keep turning the handle. That's how you're going to bring the fish in with that handle. I saw him. You got him. Yeah. Tommy got it. You want to do another one? Here, why don't you grab them. him? Why don't you grab him and start reeling him too? Two of them are. Do two this, of them do are this one. Swinging to the little bit. Oh, this one's nice. Whoa, I don't need it. Oh. Woo! Oh, yeah, it's a. Now let's put that. Look at that. Tell me that's your first double. We got two of them. Yeah. Oh. Look at that. Now yeah, tell me, look at the camera and say polar bear strength. Polar bear strength. This one's pooping. Okay, shall we put them back? Yeah, you will do it. I guess I got the wrong one. So I get a lot of questions about what type of hook to use. I'm a big fan of circle hooks because I've got my rod sitting in rod holders. Circle hooks are good for that because you don't need to set the hook. You just wait till the fish is on and you reel down. I use 10 aught circle hooks for the big boys and I use four aught circle hooks for the small channel catfish. Uh, but as you can see today, I'm catching plenty of small channel catfish on 10 aughts. So they're pretty versatile. All right, this is great. I've got a group of crew here that are going to appears to paddle over my line here. Listen, stop what you're doing and I'll reel in because if you get tangled up, this is 40 pound line, it's not breaking. Awesome. And if it gets... Say hi to all the baby people at home. <laughs> all right. You know, at times like this, it's easy to get frustrated, but you know, we all got to share the water and they're not trying to do it on purpose. So try not to make them hate fishermen. Well, this has just been an awesome day. So I want you to have a great day like this too. So I'm gonna give away this rod, my Whisker Seeker rod, to one of you subscribers. So if you wanna win, this is what you need to do. Make sure you've subscribed. 
Then share this video on any social media website you want, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And then leave a comment telling me what your favorite catfish and carp uh, video is. And then I'm gonna pick the winner uh, one week from today, one week from the day this video is posted. And I'm gonna reply to the winning comment and let them know they're the winner. And I'm gonna announce the winner in my video one week from today. So good luck to everybody, hope you win. And uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of these rod giveaways. So make sure you click subscribe so that you can get on all the action. I have a lot of rods to give away this year. Check out these other videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, including my top eight catfish baits and my zombie apocalypse fishing challenge with Mike from One Rod and One Reel. Click subscribe. <laughs>